I decided that I had to come back and do a second part to this video on two stage least squares. I was just running out of time. And so I showed you the basic idea behind um, endogeneity and two stage least squares last time. And I showed you how to do it by hand, where in the first stage you regress the endogenous explanatory variable price in this case on the exogenous variables and then use the predicted values in the original demand equation that we were estimating and so we did that and then I was rushing so at the end I just said look if you're in R and you want to see how to do it uh, automatically in R just to type help or question mark uh, TSLS and again this is after loading the SEM package for simultaneous equation modeling and the example that pops up is using this Cominta data and it uh, shows you at the bottom here exactly what commands to do. In this video I'm going to run through that very quickly but then I'm going to spend some time actually looking at what the results mean and make a couple of graphs. And so in R if you have already loaded the library you have to download and, and load the library um, called uh, SEM. So if you've done that and uh, you want to run a two-stage least squares model, uh, then to estimate the demand function, basically the command is, I'm just going to copy and uh, paste this from the help file so I don't have to type it is to run the regression the command is TSLS instead of uh, the normal in RLM for linear model so TSLS and the first part of the command is uh, what equation do you really want to estimate and this is the demand equation quantity explained by price and income D is disposable income and then a comma and then you put tilde all of those exogenous variables so not just the income but the um, last year's price and A is for time and then comma data equals Cominta and that tells uh, R where to look for these variables and you can assign this regression to a name and then do a summary but the way they do it in the example here is to just uh, go ahead and do the summary so just hit enter and you get the uh, all of the output without having to by hand go through the two stages but you get exactly the same slope for price and the same slope for uh, income disposable income that we got before and all of the other information should be exactly the same as doing it by hand and then you can do the same thing for supply and get the uh, estimates for the supply equation and the way this example is set up, the uh, parameters of the supply equation are going to be last year's price, this year's price, and time. And I've already done that. Let's suppose we have those estimates. Using two stage least squares for the demand equation. So the demand equation is 94.63 minus 0.24 times price plus 0.31 times disposable income and so we should have a positive slope on income and a negative slope on price for the law of demand. Now if we want to graph this in two dimensions a common thing people will do is to substitute in the average for income and when we multiply 0.31399 times the average value of income in this data set which is 97.53, that adds another component into the y-intercept. And so we're just left with one variable quantity and a second variable for price, and we can graph this in two dimensions. And of course, when we graph this, we have the y-intercept, 125.25, and we need one more point to connect to make a straight line so we can see what this looks like. And if we plug in price equals 100, this equation gives a quantity demanded of 100.894. So let's look at the original data and plot to see what this would look like. 
So here's a scatter plot of the original uh, data. If you just look at price and quantity for uh, the Cominta data set, but it's kind of hard to graph because we're zoomed in. We can't see where zero quantity and zero price is. So I zoomed out where it's uh, this is equally difficult to see what's going on because all of the data is uh, in one little clump over here. But I want us to be able to see what does that demand equation look like if we were to graph it. And so again, the y-intercept that we had is 124, sorry, 125.25. And this other point is uh, price equals 100 quantity equals 100.1. So let me graph that for you. Okay, after as carefully as I can graphing what that line would look like, uh, what the demand equation would look like, we end up with this green line. And as you see, this green line does kind of go through the middle of the points in a way. But keep in mind that this demand equation is just the average as in different years the income increases or decreases that's going to act as a shifter shifting the demand up and down through different points so this is kind of like the average demand uh, through this time period in this data set and now let's do the, exactly the same thing with supply the supply equation if you go through the two two stage least squares is 49 and a half plus 0.24 times price plus 0.255 times last year's price, plus 0.25 times the year. And so doing the same kind of procedure, if we substitute the last year's price with the average and the year with their averages, we end up with this simple equation that we can graph in two dimensions here. And again, plugging in for another price uh, of 100, we get a quantity supplied of 100. So using the y-intercept, and this additional point, let me graph what that supply equation would look like for you. Okay, and here's, here's approximately what that supply equation would look like. Now, but keep in mind that the graph we're looking at here is what we call the demand and supply equations where we have quantity on the Y and price on the X. I know that's a little confusing, but the reason I've done it this way is because quantity is the dependent variable in these regressions that we're running. Keep in mind that uh, if you were to do a standard supply and demand graph that we would flip these axes in this case. But the same information is being represented and you can see again here that this supply curve that we got through doing two stage least squares does kind of go through the middle of the data, but it's only by doing two stage least squares that we can separate out these two equations when all we get to see are the equilibria, the intersection of these two equations as they shift up and down in the various uh, years. And so again, this supply equation, this is the average supply equation during this time period, but as, uh, looking at the coefficients here, as last year's crop price increases, that's going to shift the supply curve to increase supply. And similarly, the coefficient for as years go by steadily increases supply, as we might expect to be the case in most countries. And so I hope you've... Uh, learned a little bit about the idea of endogeneity and how to solve it with two stage least squares. After watching this video you're not going to be an expert but that's okay. Uh, hopefully you will learn more as you practice.